Welcome back, welcome back. Now we have our data set here. A hundred measures of pain ratings. And we've got some beautiful pictures. For example, this frequency histogram of those hundred numbers. Now, of course, when you get a data set like this, you're very excited. You want to text all your friends about it. So what are you going to text them? You need sort of some summary information. You need to describe the data. We call these descriptive statistics believe it or not. Well, what's the basic one? You'd guess correctly, the average, the mean. Well, we turn it on and here it is. A little green triangle down here marking the average of all these data points. Whew. You can think of it as a little balance point along this axis here. And if all these dots were, say, basketballs, they would balance right at this point here. So your instinct is exactly right, that the ones out at the edges here, they have a pretty strong influence on the mean. They sort of pull it towards wherever they are, these extreme ones. Next thing you'd want to text is something about the um, dispersion, the range, the variability, the width of this distribution. Well, here we have a pretty fancy measure called the standard deviation. Well, it's actually the root mean square of the uh, uh, difference between the uh, points and the mean. Did that really help? No. Well, don't worry about that. Think of it as just, roughly speaking, the sort of typical distance from a point to the mean. And here's a little picture showing one standard deviation above the mean and one standard deviation below. We can even turn on lines that mark one above, two above, three above, and correspondingly below. And we can notice that, and this is often the case, not always, that nearly all the data lie between two standard deviations below the mean and two standard deviations above, a rough rule of thumb. There's one uh, a alternative way we can summarize the uh, whole distribution. Instead of a mean, we could mark the median. And this is this pink little line here. And it's pretty much the same as the mean. And that's true when we have a distribution that's more or less symmetric. What is the median? It's that point above and below which half the data points lie. So you simply start at the bottom and count out 1, 2, 3, 4, 50. And then you draw a line. And you know that 50 are below. 50 are above, and that's the median. Another measure for the uh, spread, very simple, is the range. Simply tell us the lowest one and the highest one. So here we have a range from 30. And if I scroll down in this ordered list to the bottom, the highest one is 79. And we can read that off here from 30 to 79. So that's the range. By now, you've got a pretty long text message, but you've got a pretty good summary of your data set to um, send to your friends. One more thing. Let's try some different data that's not symmetric. So what I'm going to do is um, uh, change to measuring reaction time, response time to some task in milliseconds. That's thousands of a second. And I'm going to generate some different data, uh, let's say skew to the right. And um, excuse me while I do a bit of technical backroom stuff here, inventing data. Now, you'd never do that, would you? No, no, no. But in the computer, we can play around and do it. Oh, and here we have 100 reaction times. And we happen to have an outlier of an extreme value there way up. and. The shape of this distribution is skewed. That means it's got a bit of a long tail in one direction or the other. And this is positive skew, skew up to the right here, a few higher values. And that's pretty common for reaction time measures because, of course, you can't get reaction time less than zero or, practically speaking, less than 200 or 300 milliseconds, say. But if somebody has a bit of a mental blink or uh, tunes out for a moment, you can get long reaction times. And this is pretty common pattern 
in lots of uh, variables in health sciences when we have a little bit of positive skew like that. What do you do about that? Well, sometimes we just say it's not too serious and we ignore it. Uh, we might use a different statistical approach or we might do a transformation of the data. I'm not going to go into those details, but the picture will tell you, at least give you a rough idea whether we've got much skew. One interesting thing is that now the mean, this green triangle, and the median are slightly separated. And that's pretty common for um, when you've got um, skew distributions because these few outliers right up here in the tail to the right, they pull the mean up. Think of the mean as this balance point, whereas the median just responds to how many lie to the left, how many to the right, whether they're very close or a long way away. So now we're still looking at a picture of our data, but we've seen slightly more complicated, slightly greater range of possibilities, but still our basic decision is, our basic attitude is that it's great to have pictures of our data because we can begin to understand what's going on.